What up you fluffy bastards, my name is Liquid Blitz and today I'm going to go through the new weapons in the first DLC for Battlefield 1. They shall not pass. There's, uh, I think there's six new weapons plus a couple of melee weapons. So let's go through them quickly. I'm going to give you the real info for each weapon, the real life information. Uh, whether the sort of specifics and stats will be the same in Battlefield 1, I mean, I don't know, it's a video game so they might change things for sort of balance purposes. But I'm going to give you the real stats for the weapons. And I'm also going to give a little bit of history about each one because it, it's interesting and shit and you might actually learn something useful for, from playing Battlefield 1, so, you know, go impress your parents. Now, as I said, there's a new weapon for each class except Assault gets two because they get a new SMG and shotgun, whereas all the other classes just get one. There's a new sort of extended variant of a pistol, which I'm pretty sure is for a, a, a pilot slash tanker class. And then finally, there are three melee weapons, which I'll discuss at the very end of the video. I'm not going to cover everything else in the DLC, I'm just going to focus on the weapons because you can find all the other information on the Battlefield website. First of all, we have the Lebel Model 1886. By the way, I'm going to butcher how to pronounce all of these weapons because they're all French weapons, so I'm going to screw up the, the, the pronunciation of the words, so just, just excuse me for that. But first we've got the Lebel Model 1886, and it was created, obviously, in 1886. And it remained in service all the way up until 1940 in, the, in World War II. Apparently it was due to a bunch of sort of, sort of economic reasons and, and reduced war budgets and so on. The French army was sort of slow to modernise their weapons, which is why it remained in service for so long. It was a bolt-action infantry rifle, as you'd expect of the Scout class. Now, it had an eight-round magazine, uh, but apparently it could store around in the transporter... Now, I don't know what that is, but it could also apparently hold around in the chamber. So, a, a max size of 8, but apparently it could be up to 10 in the game. Now, there were a few gripes about this weapon when it was in service. Uh, basically, it was known for its very slow reload and low sights on the weapon. Apparently, it was said during World War I by the soldiers that actually used the weapon that its very slow reload was its main handicap compared to other rifles at the time. And apparently the, the other downside was it, apparently its sights were very low so it was hard to align with so maybe that'll translate into a, a longer aim down sight time in Battlefield 1 but, but probably not. Now apparently the Model 1886 could be equipped with a rifle grenade launcher which sort of throws into question which class this uh, weapon should be used on. I mean if the Battlefield wiki is to be believed it's, it's for the scout class and I'm pretty sure it is. I mean it's bolt action. But the fact that it could equip a grenade launcher is, is I don't know, make, make of that what you will. Now, the second weapon coming in the DLC is for the medic class, and it's the RSC 1917. Now, as its name suggests, it was introduced in 1917, uh, and it was used by the French army from then until 1926. Um, so it was actually introduced quite late, towards the, the end stages of World War I. It's a semi-automatic infantry rifle, like almost every other gun in the medic class. It has a five round magazine size, which I don't like. I don't like any weapon in the, uh, in the medic class that have five rounds, because you need more than that, really. It's also interesting to note that it used the same ammo as the Model 1886. In fact, as you'll come to see in the other weapons as well, this ammo type was sort of the main ammo used by the French military, so it, that's why it's used in so many guns. Now, according to the soldiers who actually used this weapon in World War I, um, it was apparently disliked because of its heavy weight, and apparently it was too lo physically long as well, so it was difficult to maintain in the trenches. Now, this next point is sort of beyond me, but apparently the gas port near the muzzle had such a small diameter compared to other rifles that it tended to sort of screw up after repeated use, meaning you actually had to dismantle the gun and clean it out after sort of every, apparently every hundred shots or so. So it seems, according to my research at least, that this weapon was, was kind of a ball leg for the troops that had to use it. Third weapon in the DLC is the Chow Chat. I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce it, but it looks like Chow Chat for the support class. Apparently it was very popular. It was in service from 1908 all the way to 1945. It was a long lifetime and it was apparently used in seven different wars. It's an automatic light machine gun and it has a 20 round mag size, so that's the same as the BAR. And again, it used the 8mm level ammo, the same as the other two previous guns. Now, from what I can tell, this LMG was quite groundbreaking. It uses a pistol grip, uh, as well as uh, an attached stock, a detachable mag, which is a big deal, because most things were belt-fed back in those days, and, it, and you, it had a select fire option, so you didn't have to fire automatic. The downside of this weapon was apparently it had serious overheating and sort of jamming issues where it would just stop firing. I mean, it was so popular that construction of the weapon was simplified to make it easier to sort of mass produce, which apparently re resulted in uh, using lots of low quality metal parts. The magazine especially was prone to getting sort of mud and shit inside. And the next weapon on the list is for the Assault class, the first for the Assault class, and this is a shotgun. Yes, there's another shotgun being added to the game. It's a 12-gauge semi-automatic shotgun, and it had a 5-round mag size, which is, yeah, it's okay. 
Now, this shotgun had a very limited service, especially in World War One. It was produced in 1908-1909, and from what I can tell, unlike the other weapons in this DLC, it wasn't used by the French. At least that's what my research has, has yielded. It was created by a Swedish inventor, and according to Wikipedia, uh, it was used by the Norwegians. So I don't know how. I don't know why this is being included in a, a DLC that's aimed at the French. As I say, very limited servers. Apparently, only about 5,000 were ever made. So it's quite, I don't, it's not immediately clear why this shotgun's been in introduced into this game. It's such a small, uh, a, a very limitedly used weapon in real life. So, I mean, make of that what you will. Now, the next weapon on the list, I've no idea how to pronounce. It looks like Ribby Rolls or Ribby Rolls. I'm, I'm butchering that, I'm sure. It was in service in 1918, which makes it sound like it was introduced towards the end of the war. And apparently its design was based on the RSC-1917 from above, um, uh, specifically the firing mechanism design. Now this Ribby Rolls 1918 was a submachine gun, and it was originally created for French tank crews who obviously needed a, a sort of a more lightweight, smaller, user-friendly weapon than a, than a long rifle. Now my research for this weapon taught me that it uses a 20 round magazine because apparently it used the same magazine clip as the one used in the Chow Chat LMG, which was 20 rounds. But apparently some sources for Battlefield 1 specifically say it has a 25 round mag, so I'm not sure what's going on there. I guess you'll have to wait to find out whether it's 20 or 25, but it'll be one of those. And again, like the Model 1886 and the RSC-1917, it uses the 8mm level ammo. It was a very popular type of ammo. Now, apparently, the only sort of gripe for this weapon at the time was that it was apparently too powerful for its intended use. I mean, it was created mostly for sort of self-defense purposes of these French tank crews, but, but in terms of self-defense and being in a tank, you don't need powerful ammunition, really. Now, that's the new weapons for all the four main classes covered. Now, let's move on to the next one, the MLE 1903 Extended. Now, there is already an MLE 1903 in the game. It's a pistol, usable by all classes. But this new Extended version is for the pilot slash tanker class. Now, the regular MLE 1903 was used before this time, but this specific variant was, was ordered by the Russian army between 1908 and 1914 uh, for use in their police forces. It's your standard semi-automatic pistol, but this extended variant has a shoulder stock for, for a higher effective range. It has a 7 round magazine size plus 1 in the chamber. The MLE 1903, the standard version, I mean, it was introduced in 1903, and demand continued for it all the way up into the 1930s. It was a very popular pistol, and it was created by firearms legend John Browning. You should have heard of him. And apparently, it was adopted by a crap load of sort of police forces and militaries around the world. Now that's it for guns, let's move on to melee weapons. We have the cogwheel club, the trench fleur, and the nail knife. Now, I have no information at all on the cogwheel club or the trench fleur, like, at all. Though I will say, fleur means flower in French, so what the hell a trench flower is, I have no idea. As for a cogwheel club, it is literally ungoogleable. There is no information on cogwheel club. I'm guessing it's just a club with a giant cog on the end. I mean, that's, that's, that's as much as I can guess, really. Now the nail knife we do have some information on. They were sort of they were crudely made knives made from recycled metal due to sort of material shortages during the war and they were they were mostly made out of bayonets, recycled bayonets. Now three of these improvised knives could be made from one single ba recycled bayonet from a model 1886, the first weapon in this list. All you had to do was take a bayonet and sort of melt it down and uh, forge it into a few different knives. Now over the years they did make slightly more refined versions with like wooden handles and knuckle guards. But yeah, it's basically an improvised, recycled sort of knife. And that's it. Those are all the new weapons coming in the first DLC, dropping sometime in March. I don't know the exact date, but sometime in March. Uh, I hope you found this useful or sort of insightful or interesting. But I personally enjoy sort of researching military weapons and military history and that sort of thing. So I hope you do as well. Like this video if you liked it. Like this video if you didn't like it. And join me in my next video. I've not, no idea what that'll be. So anyway, stay tuned and catch me then. Oh, <laughs>